Can you tell us uh, where the World Bank is in its journey to think about beyond GDP and where you think an instrument like um, this index, but more importantly, the, the kind of al alarming news that the, uh, the wealth report is, is showing us, where, where are you taking that with the bank? No, thank you, Dominique. You know, it was interesting listening to Inger and the ambassador talk about how important getting beyond GDP is, and it is, but it's also equally important that we don't frame this as an either or. It's not GDP or inclusive wealth. It's a both and discussion. And I think that's important because we know there's a degrowth agenda going on. And we're living in a moment when the hard won development dividends, hard won by the poorest people on this planet to try and get into the middle class, are in danger. We can't have a conversation that says GDP doesn't matter. Because it does, and for a long time it did track with development gains. If you look at since the 1980s until before COVID, the income of the lowest half of people on the planet, the poorest people on the planet, did double. Maternal health doubled. Maternal mortality, child mortality was cut in half in that period. There's 100 million children running around being loved by their parents who wouldn't have existed, who would have died in childbirth. So GDP matters, economic activity is important. It's just that what we found since COVID, not just because of, because of COVID, but in this period is that it isn't enough. We were suddenly hit in 2020 by this terrible combination of COVID, climate change, suddenly getting very, very bad. It was no longer seen as something that was about our grandchildren, it was about our grannies as well because it's happening now, and conflict, all of which are related to natural capital. And I don't think we think about this enough. We may not know where COVID comes from, but we know that pandemics are coming at us through the arc of deforestation, through wildlife crime, through zoonoses that are traveling from wildlife through livestock to us. We know that climate change is not just affecting natural capital, and it is, but the loss of natural capital is accelerating climate change. And the number of disasters is increasing. And conflict is something we don't think enough about in terms of natural capital, but between 1946 and 2010, 40% 40 40 of all conflict was caused by, or made worse by, or funded by natural capital. And so these last few years, we've really seen that GDP is not enough, that if we're not keeping an eye on the underlying assets, including natural capital, that produce that economic activity, we're not doing enough. So are we late to the game, Dominique? In many ways, yes, but like everything in development, we tend to sometimes be responsive. And so there's been a lot of work being done on natural capital accounting for the past 15 years. There's been a lot of work in different countries Botswana has been doing water accounts, the Philippines has doing, been doing natural capital accounts, we have tourist accounts, we have all sorts of accounts based on renewable natural capital. Because of course the other thing we need to distinguish is when it comes to natural capital, it includes non-renewable natural capital, fossil fuels. So we also have to be very careful to nuance the story on natural capital because it's not all nature, some of it are the very fossil fuels that a lot of us stand up and talk about the need to transition away from. So there's been a lot of work going on. At the World Bank, we've been working on something called the Changing Wealth of Nations. It's our flagship report, the equivalent of the Inclusive Wealth Report. And this has been our way of working with countries using the UN SEA, the System of Environmental Economic Accounts, to begin to do what Eli was talking about, which is get natural capital onto the balance sheet through every country's system of national accounts. And that to me is sort of, we have two key next steps, I think, Dominique, when it comes to this. We've been in a wonderful period of creation when it comes to wealth accounting, and there's been different ways of doing it, and co-evolution of ways that are similar in some ways and different in other ways. And the IWRs and the Inclusive Wealth Index is one, our changing wealth of nations and natural capital accounting is another. And that's been very, very important because we need to understand how different ways work and what's good and what's bad. 
Now I think we need to come and start moving towards convergence. One of the powers of GDP is that everybody measures it the same way, everybody uses it the same way. We run a risk in the beyond GDP movement when we want to add a wealth account, that if there are too many ways to do it, countries will pick the way to do it that shows their balance sheet in the best light. We need one way to do it, we need to agree, and so that's a conversation that I know that's going on between our teams, between the UN Statistical Division, to get it right, to focus and make sure that it's focused on the system of national accounts. And that means thinking about price. We use market price or proxies for market price. You use accounting price and shadow price. We have to figure out what's, what, how, when it's on the balance sheet, we have to make that distinction clear and it has to be usable by governments. I think the second next step we have to do is be able to talk, to this to talk about this to people who aren't necessarily economists. We have to be able to talk about this in a way that people understand. And we also have to be able to talk about this to ministers of finance and economists in the Departments of Statistics office, not in an ideological way. Not using these big numbers to push an environment agenda, but to make this agenda, the wealth accounting agenda, boring. Just another part of their job that they do. So whether or not they like the environment, whether or not they think nature matters, is irrelevant because the way they do their work will have to include it. So we have to find a way to talk about this that everybody understands, that doesn't make, mean we compete with GDP, but we're adding to it, and that does help countries understand how to use their balance sheet better.